guys, Dr. Maida here. I'm a fourth year anesthesia resident here at UT Health San Antonio. I'm gonna go over some ventilation settings. Um, just some quick little tips that'll help you out when you're starting as an intern in the OR. But we're gonna focus mainly on the settings we use for mechanical ventilation in the operating room, all right? So you usually have four different options. You can use volume control, you can use pressure control, uh, you can use pressure support and manual spontaneous, which just means the patient will be breathing on their own without any sort of assistance. Um, so with all these different mechanical ventilation modes, you're gonna be able to deliver both tidal volume, respiratory rate, uh, which is just another way of saying you're gonna be able to ventilate the patient. And you're also gonna be able to oxygenate the patient. So ventilation is gonna depend on your tidal volume and your respiratory rate, and oxygenation is gonna depend on your PEEP and your FiO2 as well, all right? So let's go ahead and talk about volume mode, which is a very popular mode that we use in the operating room. So you have your different settings here. You have manual spontaneous, you have volume mode, you have volume uh, AF mode, which just a, another specific version of volume mode, but we won't get into that. And you have pressure mode and pressure support. So let's click volume mode. So for volume mode, like I said earlier, we're gonna just touch on the basics because I want you guys to be able to utilize this very quickly. And you, you really just gotta know a couple of basics to use all these modes. So the first thing I wanna go over is for minute ventilation or for ventilation, you have two settings, you have your tidal volume and your frequency, and that will give your minute ventilation right here. And you also have your peak, which can be adjusted as well, and that's gonna help with oxygenation. And then you also have your FiO2 right here, which you can adjust accordingly. You can add some air as well and that will give you a percent oxygen that you will give the patient when they inspire. All right. So when it comes to volume mode, there's a few things you should keep in mind. So we discussed ventilation and oxygenation. So when it comes to volume mode, the ventilator is pretty much going to, the ventilator is going to deliver a certain preset tidal volume that you adjust on the ventilator, right? So over here, we put 600. So for the ventilator to deliver 600 tidal volume, the, ven the ventilator utilizes an intrinsic mechanism inside that delivers that tidal volume with a certain amount of pressure. So depending on how compliant your lungs are, your pathophysiology in your lungs, that pressure might uh, be higher in someone who had, who may be morbidly obese or has some lung uh, pathologies such as COPD or asthma, as opposed to someone who might be healthy. So for example, if we have someone with a BMI of 25, they're very healthy, the peak and expiratory pressure or the peak pressure may be around 16 to 17 with a tidal volume of 600. So this peak pressure here, let's just say it's gonna be about 16 if they are a normal BMI without any sort of pathology in their body. Now, someone with a BMI of 45, right, and who may be a smoker as well, to deliver this preset tidal volume of 600, this peak pressure is actually going to increase, and it could be over 30, it could be 35. And so that might cause some barotrauma to the patient. And so ways you can decrease uh, inflicting that barotrauma, you could decrease the amount of tidal volume you deliver, um, and, or you can actually adjust the ventilator and use a different mode. So a lot of times in the operating room, if we have patients who are a little bit more obese, um, we might use pressure control or pressure mode as opposed to volume mode. And this way we control the amount of pressure that the lungs of the patient, um, uh, we, we control the amount of pressure that's delivered um, to the patient. So that way we decrease the amount of bear trauma. So for instance, here I put a, max, a maximum pressure of 30. So with that pressure of 30, regardless of 
you know, the patient's um, uh, lung pathology, we're gonna use that pressure of 30 and, and the ventilator is gonna deliver whatever tidal volume it can deliver with that pressure of 30. Um, so that's the difference between pressure mode and volume mode. Um, and so one factor that plays a big role is compliance. So the compliance of the lung, right? The compliance is equal to the change in volume over the change in pressure. So if you have low compliance, then you're gonna have an increased amount of pressure that you're gonna have to inflict on the lung, um, which could possibly cause more barotrauma. So patients who have obesity, they have other chronic diseases, that's gonna have decrease their compliance. They're gonna have more of a restrictive pathology. That, that's why sometimes patients can benefit uh, from pressure mode if they do have those pathologies. In addition to that, positioning depends a lot too. So sometimes if the patient is in some uh, steep Trendelenburg, depending on the type of surgery that they're getting, we might use pressure mode so we can control the max amount of pressure that they're getting. That way we don't inflict any barotrauma on them. So using volume mode or pressure mode requires the patient to be deeply anesthetized or paralyzed. So the patient does not do any work on these modes, right? So the ventilator is actually doing all the work. They're not initiating any sort of breaths. And you can find different modes. If you go to the ICU, if you go to the operating room, there's some modes in the ICU, they could be uh, VCAC. So it's pretty much another way of saying that the patient triggers the ventilator to deliver a preset tidal volume by just initiating a breath. But we don't do that in the operating room as much because a lot of times these patients are paralyzed for surgery and deeply anesthetized. So we have to take full control. So once the patient is approaching the stage of anesthesia called emergence or when they're waking up from anesthesia, we actually start transitioning them to start waking up on the ventilator as well. And one way to do it is we put them on pressure support. So pretty much pressure, pressure support means that we are going to assist the patient by getting over the resistance of the endotracheal tube by adding uh, 10 centimeters of water to get over the resistance of the endotracheal tube and also providing some peak and expiratory pressure to keep the alveoli open as well. And there's also a, um, Another, a, another setting on this mode that's called the trigger. And it pretty much, to sum it, to sum it up and make it easy, it pretty much requires the patient to generate a certain amount of force or negative pressure to trigger uh, the ventilator to assist it. Um, so the trigger mode pretty much, to make it easy on every, to make it easy on everyone, the trigger mode just means that the patient has to trigger the ventilator to assist it. So the patient has to generate a certain negative uh, pressure to uh, obtain an extra 10 centimeters of water to uh, get over the resistance of the endotracheal tube and to also get um, five of peep as well to keep the alveoli open. So this is kind of the middle phase uh, setting, you could think of it that way, where the patient was on volume mode. Now they're starting to breathe on their own. Uh, they're starting to get less anesthetized. They're starting to wake up. So you move them over to pressure support and this helps them get over the resistance of the endotracheal tube and gives them a little bit of peep as well. Once they're breathing pretty well on uh, pressure support and they're triggering the ventilator, then you can actually move them to manual spontaneous. So the manual spontaneous mode will actually not provide them with that 10 centimeters of water. This is pretty much the patient breathing on their own completely. So if they can breathe on their own completely with an endotracheal tube and they demonstrate ad adequate minute ventilation, they demonstrate ad adequate vital capacity, if they're also um, you know, sustaining a five second head lift and they're responding to commands, then at that point, you know that the patient is breathing, ventilating, oxygenating fine. They're also re uh, responding to commands. And at that point, it's safe to take out the endotracheal tube.